the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, which started on the 24th of February, has seen a large variety of vehicles, with designs dating back from the 1950s up till the modern day. We have even managed to witness a large number of uncommon vehicles from prototypes or rare production vehicles to field conversions, used and even lost. In this video, we will take a look at said uncommon vehicles, seen from the beginning of the invasion till the end of March. Since the conflict has seen both sides make exaggerated claims, some of which are false or unverifiable, this video will only cover vehicles which have photographic evidence of use in the current conflict. Before we get into the video, let me briefly remind you that if you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. On the first day of the invasion, Russian troops were seen operating with an RKHM Kashalat, which is a chemical reconnaissance vehicle. The Kashalat has the hull shape and single rear door of the 2S1 Gvazdika self-propelled howitzer, which is based on the chassis of the MTLBU multipurpose armored personnel carrier, a variant of the ubiquitous MTLB APC. The MTLB was designed in the early 1960s and continues to see widespread use around the world as a cheap, simple, tracked vehicle that can withstand rifle caliber rounds and can fulfill a multitude of objectives. From carrying troops, to serving as the basis for a self-propelled howitzer, to chemical reconnaissance, this 60-year-old multi-tool can handle it all. This video should honestly just be titled 1001 MTLBs or something like that. Two days later, on the 26th of February, the world caught a glimpse of the Ukrainian Kevlar E on the streets of Kharkiv. What the world saw was a prototype infantry fighting vehicle that is actually another machine based on the 2S1 self-propelled howitzer. This vehicle has room for six passengers, a remote-controlled weapon system mounting a 30mm auto cannon, a 7.62mm machine gun, an anti-tank guided missile launcher, and a 30mm automatic grenade launcher. It can only protect against rifle caliber rounds and shrapnel. Apart from that, the vehicle has received numerous other upgrades that allow it to compete with other lightly armed AFVs it may face such as the BMP-2 and BTR-82A. Different sources claim when the prototype was first built, be it 2018 or 2020, but one thing is for sure, it's pretty damn new. Continuing on the topic of Gvazdikas, that same day, a 2S1 converted into a ZU-23-2 anti-aircraft gun carrier with a turret removed was captured by Ukrainian forces in Luhansk Oblast. This vehicle is presumably a conversion performed by the Luhansk People's Republic forces. 152mm 9M133 Cornets mounted on UAZ Patriot pickup trucks have been spotted in use by Russian forces since early into the conflict notably around Kharkiv. This is a simple conversion which appears to be somewhat commonly employed by some units of the Russian army, most notably by the VDV. The Cornet is a pretty modern Russian ATGM that can utilize a number of warheads, particularly tandem-shaped charges that can penetrate over a meter of rolled homogeneous armor. In other words, it could penetrate the front of most Ukrainian tanks, provided the tanks aren't fitted with Nyizh explosive reactive armor. A video from the 1st of March has emerged showing protesters around a Russian MTLB upgraded with what was suspected to be Contact-1 explosive reactive armor. However, it seems like it's most probably some kind of ceramic armor. If it was Contact-1, 
it would be quite odd as the MTLB isn't very strongly armored. And if the ERA is detonated, the vehicle's thin steel armor may be compromised. A Ukrainian BMP-1 upgraded with the Spears or Spear Combat Module was knocked out in Makariv Kyiv Oblast on either the 4th or 12th of March. This is a rare upgrade thought to have been developed for export and only in very limited service. The Spear Combat Module is similar in appearance to the RCWS found on the Kevlar E, with the same armaments to replace the BMP-1's outdated 73mm low-pressure gun. A BMP-1, up-armored with additional side skirts, was seen in use early in the war, perhaps by separatist forces. The effectiveness of this field modification is limited, but could possibly help against artillery fragments and reducing thermal signature. A Russian MT-LBM-6MB was lost in Ukraine on March 5 which is a somewhat uncommon upgrade to the MTLB fitted with the 30mm armed BPPU turret from the BTR-80 or BTR-82. On March 13th, the 2S-34 Hosta self-propelled howitzer was photographed. This is an uncommon upgrade of the 2S-1 Gvazdika that utilizes a new semi-automatic 120mm artillery gun. Unveiled in 2014, only small numbers, maybe around 30, are believed to be in use by Russia. This one was abandoned and then captured by Ukrainian forces, leading to this photograph being taken. Since the start of the conflict, some Russian MTLBs have been seen with mounts for RPO rocket launchers, both in the south, as indicated by the V marker, and the north, as indicated by the Z marker. The RPO is a single-shot, self-contained, tube-shaped launcher that can fire potent thermobaric and incendiary ammunition. The T-64B1M is a Ukrainian upgrade of the T-64B1. 50 were upgraded and sold to the Democratic Republic of Congo, but only 25 were delivered, the others were seized by Ukraine. One was lost on March 16, and a video of a couple of these tanks firing has been released by the Azov Battalion on the 22nd of March. The T-64B1 is a cheaper version of the T-64B, the difference being that the T-64B has the ability to launch ATGMs from the main gun, and the T-64B1 foregoing that capability. The B1M upgrade is similar to the BM Bullet in that Niege ERA is stuck on the tank, and the B1M also has a turret bustle added to the back. Unlike the Bullet, it retains the original fire control systems that date back to the 1970s. A fire control system that was good for its time, but is ultimately outdated. And as mentioned, it lacks the capability to fire ATGMs from the main gun. Unfortunately, a Russian T-80 based prototype designated T-80UM-2 was destroyed in Sumy Oblast on the 17th of March. It was presumably in regular Russian army service alongside standard T-80s for some time, but it's believed to have been a unique vehicle. The vehicle was designed to test DRAWS-2, a hard-kill active protection system that could intercept certain anti-tank projectiles such as rockets and ATGMs. DRAWS-2 is only able to protect the tank in a 120-degree radius around the front of the turret. The Soviets planned to mass-equip the T-80Us with DRAWS-2, but that has resulted in only this sole vehicle that is now destroyed. The vehicle was probably not mounted with DRAWS-2, but did retain the sensors unique to the vehicle. 
A few Russian TATUKs have been destroyed or captured. The first TATUK was abandoned and then later destroyed on the 27th of February. The TATUK is an uncommon command variant of the TATU. Apart from being equipped with additional radios, these tanks are fitted with a meteorological sensor, laser warning receivers, but also a GAVA-2, the first tank thermal site that was fielded by the USSR. But the most quirky and noticeable feature of this tank is the Shtora-1 active protection system. The same systems found on the Russian T-90 tanks and a variant of the Russian BMP-3M. The TATUK was arguably the most advanced tank designed by the Soviets. The two other TATUKs were captured by Ukrainian forces on March 20th and March 21st, respectively. Also on March 21st, a Ukrainian BTR 3M2 120mm self propelled mortar was seen captured by Russian forces in Hostomel, Kiev Oblast. The BTR-3 is a domestically designed and produced Ukrainian APC that is somewhat similar in appearance to the Soviet BTR-80. The mortar mounted is probably the Ukrainian M120-15 Molot. The first T-72 AMT tanks were spotted knocked out on March 22nd. The T-72 AMT is a Ukrainian modernization package for the Soviet T-72A tanks that were built at the end of the 1970s as a cheaper, simplified version of the T-64 series of tanks. The AMT is fitted with the Ukrainian Nizh ERA, has the ability to fire laser-guided ATGMs from its main gun, a remote-controlled 12.7mm machine gun for its commander, and other improvements that have been added to the Ukrainian T-64s. The tank still has an outdated fire control system and no thermal sights. However, it is a definite step above the outdated T-72A. On March 22nd, a peculiar sight was spotted in Donbass. A motorized tricycle armed with a Maxim M1910 machine gun used by DPR forces. This archaic vehicle does showcase that the old Maxim machine gun is still fairly widely used in this war. It is still workable as long as you don't have to haul it. An MTLB fitted with the 120mm mortar arm turret of a 2S9 Nona was seen seemingly around March 22. This conversion belongs to the separatist forces of Luhansk. There is footage of this conversion firing. The rear doors of the MTLB appear to facilitate potentially quick reloading of new shells. It is from Luhansk forces. A 2S23 Nona SVK has been captured in a Ukrainian counteroffensive that took Husarivka east of Kharkiv back from the Russian forces. This vehicle is a BTR-80 based version of the 2S9 Nona 120mm self-propelled mortar with a slightly modified version of the same gun. Russia has only 42 of these vehicles. Several T-80 UE-1s have been lost by the Russian forces. The T-80 UE-1 is an uncommon modernization for the T-80 BVs. The turret was swapped for the T-80 UD type turret, new sights, upgrades to the fire control system, and more. Two of these tanks were lost in Sumy Oblast, and one of these tanks was damaged and abandoned in Kharkiv. A video of a Ukrainian T-72 AV on the move has surfaced with an unknown date and location. 
This is believed to be a rare modernized T-72 AV due to the lack of IR searchlights, as these modernized T-72s were equipped with tank thermal sights. Even if it is a standard T-72 AV, Ukraine doesn't have much of them. In the last days of March, Ukrainian T-64BM and T-64U tanks have begun appearing in footage from the war. And as of today, March 31st, two have been lost. These are T-64 tanks modernized to the standards of the T-84 and are the most advanced Ukrainian tanks that are currently fielded. That is, if you were to discard the handful of T-84s in service. Last, and probably the least, a BTS-4A armored recovery vehicle was recently captured by Ukrainian forces in villages retaken in the Kiev Oblast. It uses the chassis of the old T-54, making it one of the most antiquated vehicles seen in this war. And that is all for this video. So, what do you think? Is the losses of these uncommon vehicles a result of three decades of imperialization and a pure disappointment for tank nerds? Or is it necessary for the cough cough denazification operation? Cough cough. Uh, anyways, see you guys next time on Tank Encyclopedia.